Greetings YouTube. I've spoken about encounter powers before. Someone recently asked me a question concerning a new um, game that has just recently been put out. Uh, I apologize, I don't remember who sent me the message. It was in a comment thread on one of my other RPG videos. Um, and it's uh, Heroes Against Darkness, written by one Justin Halliday. It's actually free, so feel free to go and get a copy for yourself. I believe I got mine off of Drive Through RPG. Um, and Heroes Against Darkness is in the D20 OGL school of games. And when Mr. Halliday designed this game, he designed it so that he would be able to present the public with a game that was flexible and could fit a number of different play styles. He was trying to create more of a toolkit that could be used by a group to really hone in on exactly what they want to play. Um, he's looking for a group of best games so that you can then pick the particular one that is fits your group and your play style. So it's a, a game with a lot of options. Um, but in doing so, he decided to adopt the encounter power model, which is one that I am not a fan of. And the encounter power, power uh, model is basically says that, for example, your character has an ability that can be used once per uh, encounter, for example, and your character kicks this in when they need it, and they can't use it again until the next encounter. Now, one of the reasons I don't like encounter powers, and I've spent, mentioned this before, but I'm going to cover it briefly here again, is that for me, encounter powers are something that exist at the player level without any in-world explanation on the character level. The character does not understand why they cannot use their ability when they want to. They can use it two times one day and four times the next, and they can't use it at all the next day. And for the character, there is no rhyme or reason behind this because the character does not understand that there are going to be a set number of encounters or that it only functions under specific situations. They just know that some days their powers work and some days their powers don't. And that disconnection between what's going on at the player level and what's going on at the character level bothers me to no end. Um, so I'm not a, <coughs> not a fan of that. He also uses healing surges, which is like, you know, halfway through an encounter or so, you can just say, okay, I get my, some of my hit points back. Which again, to me, is a disconnection from the game world. If you want higher levels of player character survivability, just give them more hit points. You don't need any other abilities. Don't give the monsters more hit points, give the characters more hit points. But to me, that's just padding the characters in Saran Wrap and saying characters can't die. Which is a different model. I mean, you can have a game where no one dies. Cool. That's great. I don't see the need for that kind of a mechanism to make that happen. That's, a, that's an agreement between the, the, the GM and the players, in my opinion. Now, someone else will probably point out to me that recently I've spoken about the game Radiance. Um, which is another OGL D20 game, um, which looks to be very versatile and has lots of options, and it does. Racial options and character options and all kinds of templates and things. It's got options out of the ears, and I happen to be really quite enamored by it. And while it does not have encounter powers per se, it does have abilities that are, for example, written as if the character spends one vitality point for the next five minutes, they have this racial or character ability that they can use. And let's face it, a five minute time span is an encounter. I can't remember any time where a combat lasted more than 50 rounds. This is what five minutes is, it's gonna be 50 rounds. In fact, in real life, I can't imagine a fight except in war lasting longer than five minutes. Things just don't do that in the real world sword fights and things like that are brief, brutal, and horrible affairs that don't last five minutes. Um, so why can I accept the Radiance model, and why can I not accept the Encounter Power model? Well, the Radiance model is something that takes place at the character level with a character explanation and justification. The character is making the decision, I'm going to give up part of my life force, vitality points, and in return, I get this spiffy ability. It is something that is going on in parallel at the player and the character level. There is no disconnection between these two things. Whereas I see the encounter problem powers as completely disconnected. Things that are going on at the player level without explanation at the character level. Yes, there are going to be people who point out to me that I'm being a nit 
picking to pedantic pain in the butt, and you may well be true. But it's what I want in something and what I don't want in something. That disconnection matters to me. I don't like it. I don't like encounter powers. I never, from the first time I encountered them, ha ha ha, until now, I don't like them. I thought they seemed strange the first time I encountered them, and as I spent more and more time with them and exposed myself to them in greater detail, that explained that 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 weirdness just got worse till I had out and out dislike. So, this is why I like the game Radiance and why I don't think that Heroes Against Darkness is for me. So, go out and get yourself copies of both these games. You can do that for free. Compare them for me, contrast them, and tell me what you think. Do encounter powers some, uh, bother you? Are they something you accept without even a batting an eye and you cannot fathom how anyone else doesn't just hop on board? Or is, or is Radiance closer to what you are looking for, where characters spend vitality points or life points or power points or whatever you want to explain them, to gain benefits within the game at the character level? Do you ever see a disconnection between player and characters and it, does it bother you? Or for you, so long as the player is making a decision, what the character is doing is unimportant. I want to know.